So after setting up my ragdoll from the last video, I went ahead and created this sort of an active ragdoll. And as you can see, I can touch the ragdoll and it'll try to continue to play the animation. And that's the animation that it's copying from. And here is another example. Here, I'm not copying an animation, but I've attached an empty ragdoll to the player controller in this project. Okay. Later, I think I'm going to go back and forth between the ragdoll physics and the actual animation. I haven't decided yet. But for now, let me go back to the other example and tell you about the basics on how I did it. So here, I've replaced all my character joints with configurable joints. Left up leg, for example, configurable joint. For simplicity, I locked all motion, as you can see here. And this means the joints are not going to move and they're only going to rotate. Each rotation is decided by the dummy. And if I scroll down, the dummy is selected here in this temporary script that I wrote. So left leg copies from the other left leg, and the right leg obviously copies from the other right leg. Without the info from the dummy, the right leg, for example. Okay, as you can see, it's just going to be dragged along by the other body parts. Now what makes this possible is the anchor and the spring. Every joint has an anchor, which is just a starting point. If you use a spring option, the joint will always try to return back to its anchor, like this, in terms of position or rotation or both. Now what makes the anchor really interesting is the target position, target position and the target rotation here. Instead of returning to its anchor, the joint can return to an offset of the anchor. This is interesting because you can set the offset to be exactly the same as the data from an animation. So as the animation is playing, your target position, your target rotation are constantly changing, and each of the joints are going to move towards each of the body parts from the animation. If I look at the code, my temporary code, by far, I think these two lines are the most important ones. We're getting the current position of the dummy, and we're comparing that against the anchor position and the difference becomes the offset, which becomes your target position. And it's the same thing with rotation. I'm just not good enough with quartonians to explain it to you. But if you Google this, you can easily get the difference between two quartonians. So you're just getting the difference between two positions or two rotations. What was really confusing for me was this. We have a negative number here as the offset, but the player is going up. Okay, negative 0.5, we go up positive 0.2, we go down, or 0.5, we go down more. This is because your target is a relative value. For joints, everything is relative to the parent, and the hip's parent happens to be the root of the player, which is down here. So if you have a vector going down this way, if you add a negative vector, it would look like this, which is giving you a bigger offset. If you add a positive y to the same vector, you get a smaller offset. So here, the vector happens to be going down, and adding a negative y will make it bigger. And you got to think this way for every single body part, for every position and rotation, so it might be confusing at first. But we do have the equation that gets applied the same way to all of it. So now let me just show you the process. I'm going to turn off the current dummy, the current ragdoll, and bring in a fresh prefab with nothing more than a single configurable joint. This is what we had from my last video. Okay, just an ordinary ragdoll. I'm going to go into the right leg, right up leg, remove the character joint, add configurable joint. For simplicity, let me lock the movement. But well, you can fine tune this however you want to. I'm going to add my temporary code. We also need a dummy. Get the same right up leg from the dummy. Okay, there's the dummy. 
drag in the right up leg and let me add a big rotational drive. And make sure to drag in the parent joint, which is the hip for the up leg. And if I play, you see that the right leg is copying the position and rotation, just the rotation from the dummy. I'm going to do the same to the left leg. Remove the character joint, add configurable joint, lock motion, add some rotational drive, just some big number for now, add my temporary code, find a dummy, okay, left up leg, drag it in there and the connected body which is the hip for the up leg hips and play okay now the ragdoll is sort of walking this is just one example and some animations do move the positional values so make sure you do your research because there's a lot of other options that you can use and I talked about the important basics, so I think I'm going to end my video here. I'm going to do more experiments and make more videos. And hopefully this will turn into some sort of an interesting character controller later on. Okay, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I have all the links below. You can download this project or reach me on my Discord server. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.